Hello and welcome to another episode of Lawson Learning. In today's episode, we are going to be learning about how to learn. So, what is learning? Well, learning is growing as a person through questioning, study, practice and contemplation. That's at least how I would define what learning is. Although, of course, there are many other definitions and um, you, could, you could think of learning as becoming wiser, becoming more masterful at something or um, developing a skill that you didn't necessarily have before. Um, there's no right or wrong answer to this. It's, I mean, everyone has different opinions about what, what learning is. And um, for me, however, learning is very much something to do with growing. Um, I, When I think of learning, I think of a tree as it's a seed and that seed grows and develops into something bigger and more fruitful than before. Why learn? Well, a lot of people might learn for survival purposes. So they might learn in order to uh, be healthy and to make money, for example, um, or they might learn in order to mm, find a, that perfect wife or husband or partner in their lives, and um, they might learn how to get a get a really good job that they and find work that they find fulfilling for example so uh, there are many different survival purposes as this is just to help us survive as human beings um, and that's where we are a lot of us start our learning journey is we is, is we learn well we need to learn how to drive because um, we need to get to get to work or you need to you know we, we need to travel places and driving allows us to travel places quite easily um, we also need to learn how to fit into society I mean what is what is school but a way of but a, but an education in how to fit into society um, that's really the purpose the purpose of, of school um, as you're growing up, or as it, at least as I was growing up, wasn't necessarily to do with the subjects we studied, but it was also to do with learning how to be a socially acceptable individual. And um, I'm not sure how successful I was at that, um, but I tried my best. Uh, satiate curiosity is another re potential reason why people learn things. We are born, I guess, with, with this, with a natural inborn curiosity about us. There's something I read recently about Leonardo da Vinci and how when he was younger, he would question things all the time. And I mean, what I mean is question everything. For example, why is the sky blue or what is time? And all these kinds of very fundamental questions which actually would really annoy the adults because the adults would just want to tell Leonardo oh just 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 be quiet just, we have the answers you just listen to the answers we have and unfortunately that's what school becomes about school becomes about learning the answers and memorizing the answers for tests rather than asking questions which is actually one of the main purposes of learning is, 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 is asking questions first that helps you to expand your curiosity and um, so that's one reason why we learn things is because, because we're naturally curious about things you know when we come into this world we don't know why things are the way they are we don't know why the sky is blue and we don't know why 
people live and then die? I, I, I still don't know the answer to that question. Um, and I'm sure many other people don't. Um, and you might say, oh, well, some questions are more scientifically answered, um, well, more easier to understand than um, more sort of philosophical questions like, you know, why do we die and why do we live and all these very fundamental questions. But um, that doesn't necessarily mean to say that, that those questions aren't as important as the more scientific questions like what is two plus two? Well, we need to know that. That's four. We know the answer is four. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that answer is more important than, or that question is more important than other questions. Like, why is, why is there life and death? You know, then even though we don't necessarily know the answer, or there might be many, multiple different answers to that question, um, that doesn't necessarily make it a, a less valid question. So um, another reason why we learn is also to become wiser. We want to um, become more... Yeah, we want to become wiser about, about the world around us and and also about other people because other people are very difficult to understand learning about other people is a huge area of study um social psychology um anthropology history and so on all the humanities basically are all about humans um that's why they call them humanities is that they're about other people and um we we want to become wiser about the ways of other people because that helps helps us interact with other people um, and helps us form relationships and so on. Um, so we also want to, to know and to understand the unknown. So another thing is that there's this thing called the unknown. That's what we don't know. And if you ask me, I'm, I'm probably... I'm pretty sure that we we know a lot less a lot less than we don't know in the universe and that's why it's not a good idea to be intellectually arrogant or to say that you know everything when actually learning could possibly be an infinite journey that never ends and so because because of this idea that the unknown is infinite, um, we could just be learning forever. And so there's always this curiosity to, to, to understand and to know what lies in the darkness, what lies in the unknown. We want to grow and we also want to, to self-transform as well. We want to maybe change ourselves as people. Maybe we're not happy with the way we are at the moment. Maybe we, we, we think uh, we're not, we lack something or we're not good enough in some respect. Um, and so we have to, um, we have to transform ourselves. Perhaps, perhaps the problem is that we feel we're not good enough. Maybe we have low self-esteem and, and we need to learn how to develop our self-esteem, to have high self-esteem and confidence. Um, maybe that's a a goal of yours and so um, you want to be able to self tra to transform yourself in order to learn how to become that new self that new idea of yourself and that's where the idea of um, self-actualization and self-improvement or personal development comes in so what is the learning process exactly well let's just take the example then of, of learning how to ride a bike um, when you learn how to ride a bike, you begin the process by not knowing how to ride a bike. All learning, remember, begins with not knowing. If you know it, then you know it. You've learnt it. If you don't know it, then you haven't learnt it. 
So all learning begins with not knowing, and there has to be an acceptance of not knowing as well. There is a definitely a stigma against the idea of not knowing that, you know, I'm, it might, you might think, well, I'm a stupid person because I don't know. Um, there's this like, stigma of stupidity around not knowing. Well, actually, everyone doesn't know something. So, and everyone began not knowing. So bear that in mind whenever you feel intimidated by people who know a lot and people who have learned a lot. Whenever you, you know, you know, by these academic types or by uh, maybe uh, masterful sports people and so on, you, you know, they had to start somewhere too. Everyone had to start somewhere. So that's consolation for the for the newbie, for the beginner, is that it doesn't matter if you're a newbie. In fact, it's a, it's a great thing that you're new to whatever subject you're studying. And it's a great thing that you don't know because it means that there's so much more to discover. So you begin not knowing how to ride a bike and then the next stage of this learning process is what I like to call the questioning process. So you start questioning ways of learning to ride a bike to expand your curiosity and um, give yourself some starting points for research. For example, how do I learn to ride a bike is a question you might ask. Or um, how, how do I stay balanced on the bike without falling off? When do I use the brakes? How do I ride on rough terrain? How do I ride on the road? Uh, how do I get on and how do I get off the bike? For example, there, there, there are many different uh, things you could ask. How do I use the bell, for example? And then, and once you start asking questions like these, it, it immediately gets you into that curi mindset of curiosity of wanting to learn more and wanting to know the answers to these questions. And by asking the questions, you'll immediately be attracted towards whatever the answers to those questions might be, which you don't know yet. And you have to be open to research. Then, of course, comes what I like to call the study phase, or you could call it the research phase which is where you begin by studying learning material. Ideally, I always like to do this stage by reading a book. Books are a great source of learning material um, and theory to, to, to get you started. You need to start with theory before you move on to practice. You need to know things about the setup of a, for the, in, in terms of bike riding, you need to know about the setup of a bike. Um, you need to know all the different parts of a bike. You need to know, um, you need to be shown diagrams of, of how to sit on a bike and how to move your legs in the pedals. Um, and of course, part, another part of the study process is taking riding lessons or taking lessons in whatever you want to learn. Um, so yeah, in this case, you would take bike riding lessons and you would learn, learn and take notes from a teacher. And then, of course, as you start doing lessons, this is this is where the next stage of the learning process comes in. This is practice, the practice stage. Now, this comes after the theory stage. So you can't just learn to ride a bike by reading a book about riding a bike. No matter how many books you read about, about riding a bike, you'll never know how to ride a bike unless you actually try doing it. And so this is where the practice stage comes in. So you practice bike riding. You try, you, you fail, and um, you learn from your mistakes. And then over time, you will grow in confidence at bike riding to the point where it will, it will become second nature. And that's when it becomes second nature, that's when you begin to realise that actually I have learnt this new skill of mine. And then, uh, for me, and a lot of people would say that the learning process ends there once once something becomes second nature. But actually, I I think there are a couple more steps to this process, um, even though these steps might be optional to some people. So I think the stage, the step that comes after practice, once you have learnt from your mistakes and learnt from your failures, and now you're very good at this thing, is contemplation. 
So it's during this stage that you reflect on, you contemplate and you consolidate everything you've learnt about bike riding. So you go back to those questions you wrote or you asked yourself at the beginning of the learning process, like how do I learn to ride a bike? How do I stay balanced on the bike without falling off? And you, you form the answers to those questions that you need. And then finally, the stage you come to is the, the final stage is, is something called the teaching stage. So this is where you share your wisdom on, on bike riding, for example, in this case, with other people and you, you help them to learn this new skill. Um, now, of course, this is optional, but I think in the end, everyone would would be interested in the idea of teaching because, well, let's answer the question, why why teach what you know? Well, you won't be around forever and you want the skill to continue into the future and to gain popularity so more people can learn and enjoy the skill long after you're gone and also when you're alive as well when you're alive you'll you'll be able to practice the skill with other people um with more and more people and um so naturally if you if you learn something well and you master something you will want to share that thing with with other people and that wraps up what i would call the learning process and hopefully answers the question, how do I learn? So thank you for watching today's episode of Lawson Learning. I will be back with more content in the future. So subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you.